God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. There is the government of light and there is the government of darkness. The government of light is powered by submission to God and the government of darkness is powered by rebellion. It's an activity facilitated by life and darkness functioning parallel together. And one of the things we must begin to pay attention to in the kingdom of God is understanding how to interact with the presence of God. Because if we are sons of light, we must not just carry the presence, but we must learn how to interact with the presence. And one of the channels that he has used tonight to show us how to access the presence is the channel of worship. I wish I had time this evening to talk to us about the 12 civilizations of the spirit realm. Because you see, man is the youngest creation of God. We are actually infants. We are walking with spirits that are immortal, eternal, and ageless. The reason Adam was deceived in the garden was because he didn't understand the dynamics, the intelligence, and the intricacies of the spirit realm. So when God gave him a commandment, he thought it was about obey or disobey. He didn't understand that he was trading a civilization, a government, a system, and a dominion because he was naive as touching matters of the spirit realm. And so some of the things he began to share with us tonight, they are things that you might take for granted. You know, when you approach the spirit realm, if you are helped to approach, because the Bible said, blessed is the man that the Lord causes to approach him. If you are helped to approach the spirit realm, you understand that that's, 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 that's an aeon that has existed even before time and it is regulated by powers by laws by protocols is a very robust civilization and the first civilization you will discover about that realm is that that realm is a realm of light and so if you are not granted understanding you can't participate because even wars will have depth that if you are if you begin to explore it might take you a lifetime if God tells you I love you, you won't know what it means until he explains it to you. If he say I love you, you won't understand it. Because it's, it comes from the realm of light. It's deeper than your brain. Because light is older than time. In 1 Timothy 6.16, they say God dwells in light, unapproachable. So before creation began, light was the dwelling place of God. And so everything that regulates the realm of God is powered by light. It is light that God breaks into what we call knowledge, wisdom, understanding, counsel. All of those are layers of light. So you can have knowledge and not wisdom. You can have wisdom and not understanding. And you can have understanding and not counsel. Because those are layers of light. And all of these things are one reality that governs that realm. And then if you enter that realm, you discover that one of the forces that governs that realm is sound. Because in the realms of the spirit, you are carried and it depends on the kind of sound you hear that's what will determine where you can enter you know the bible said on the day of pentecost in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 it said the holy ghost descended they heard a sudden sound as of a rushing mighty wind you will be hearing something you think you are interacting with your ear spirits are traveling <laughs> it said the son of man shall descend with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and before you know what is happening jesus has come and men have been raptured Meanwhile, you are trying to understand which sound am I hearing? Movements are taking place. So in the realm of the spirit, every time you hear sounds, there are transactions, movements are happening. That's why he said, I saw the heavens open and I heard a sound as of a voice of a trumpet. Come up here. When he turned, it was before seven lampstands. How he got there, he didn't know. Sound is a vehicle of transport. It's a civilization. So when we gather in church and we are clapping hands, you may think we are just clapping we are excited this is not a social activity when we laugh it's not a social activity it's a him that sits in the heaven shall laugh and he shall put his enemies in derision because when he laughs archangels move warriors <laughs> warriors step into the equation those are powers they are powers 
that's why jesus said every idle word you speak you will account for it because even creation is occasioned by sound when god said light be you will think he's talking things are happening because the way spirits walk is actually by talking <laughs> you walk by carrying things from place to place when the spirit is talking is walking it's a civilization and then the third thing that governs that realm is worship but you see if you don't have light and sound you can't worship those are some of the things he was sharing with us that before you heard the 20 and 4 elders there was a protocol first of all they cast their crown because you can't come with the luxury of your pride and say i am you don't know the realm you have come into every boy every being there is older than the earth so you they drop their crown they their, their crown they, they fell from their thrones and they lay down flat so there is self-denial there is reverence before you talk now that protocol will take understanding and when they started talking they first of all acknowledge who he is he said thou art worthy so if you don't know who he is how will you know he's worthy and to help you understand that they knew what they were saying they said all things were created not just by you but for thy pleasure meanwhile when you are singing you say when you see me dance and you think it's about dance steps light will come sound will come then you can talk but you see these are the civilization that we no longer know we are alien because through rebellion man is falling and so now the things that is our nativity we have to be taught again so jesus said for you to worship you must worship in spirit and in truth that means that realm has to open to you that civilization so you understand the one that you are interacting with and you understand his rank his stature his essence his being before you can bring worship to his realm but our world is falling our world needs to be educated again as touching the things of god because there are credentials god gave to us to help us to interact with this realm i taught you before that in the garden of eden there were five things god gave man let us make man in our own image that's one that's god's god's glory god's nature number two in our own likeness that's his holy character number three he said let them have dominion that's his authority the ability to represent his government number four he said in the cool of the day the voice of god came walking in the garden that's his presence and number five he said there was a tree in the garden the tree of life so man was supposed to function by god's glory by god's righteous character by god's authority by god's presence and by god's life so that he too can participate in that realm but when the, the devil came and said disobey god man thought it was about oh i'm falling i've disobeyed god oh i'm sorry it's not about i'm sorry the moment he disobeyed god he fell from his throne and the omniscient one came and said adam adam where are thou that means that disobedience was a dislocation you are no longer a prince of zion you are falling from your rank among the immortals this is how deep the realm we are talking about is and this is why we will not rest until this world is recolonized when we go about winning souls and discipling men is a, an attempt of colonization so that we bring them back to the, the realm that is their original nativity a generation needs to be taught again the ways of god a generation needs to be recolonized again from the powers of darkness because some of us we have journeyed too far so even the echoes of eternity we can't hear them anymore so god is raising new functionaries that will come by the testimonies of the finished works of christ to tell you you are falling but god is not mad at you come back home the price has been paid because sacrifice and atonement is another civilization of that realm so you didn't know what happened but when jesus died for you an exchange took place if you accept what he did you'll be restored back and as a prince so that you can begin this interaction again and as you begin this interaction you will now start growing in light you will grow again and this type of growth is not i was 2 cm now i'm 7 cm that's not what we are saying this type of growth is for you to come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of christ and paul gave us the credentials in ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 to verse 16. he said you are not tossed to and fro a lot of things begin to happen you interact 
with the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God. You start learning new things. So you come to church, for example, the person sitting by you is not a stranger. Although you didn't come from the same village, but it's deeper, it's closer to you than your brother. In fact, it's a part of your body. He said you will come to a point where you can see the next person as closer to you than your biological brother. That one is part of you. It's called the unity of the faith. Now, how is that possible? Except as by light, you now understand that in Christ we are one. So although he came from the north, you came from the east, but we were baptized into one body. So when you look, somebody is sitting by your left, that person is your ear. Another person is sitting in front of you, that person is your chest. If you hurt that person, you hurt yourself. And so if the person offends you, you forgive him even before he asks for it. And somebody else looks at you and says, are you foolish? Why did you forgive him? You are walking by light. You now see that person as part of you. So if you hurt that person, it's like slapping yourself. Who will be hurt? Both of you. Because you are now one. But that kind of civilization cannot be taught in the world. It's taught in Christ. This is the world that Jesus has called us into. To colonize this realm. So that everybody will come back into the kingdom. And when we come back into the kingdom, this will become our lifestyle. And it is one of it that he taught us tonight. Worship. 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 When you come here, you forget yourself. You submit to God. You exalt his name. And you are satisfied for doing so. He said, this is deeper than I bought a car. This is deeper than I have a house. This is actually knowing who God truly is. And then surrendering to his government and exhorting him for who he is and for what he has done. And the things he has done are not just mundane things, they are eternal things. I think we need to go back to study some things again to understand who we are and where we came from sir we came from far we are here but we are ambassadors of another dispensation we are pilgrims from another aeon we are not of here although we are here we are of heaven and we must learn our ways and one of the things that define who we, who we are is worship but unfortunately most of us can't worship even as we were worshiping a moment ago some persons crossed their legs and they were looking around you don't know thou art worthy if you know thou art worthy and if you know that's the culture of your word you will fall down or lift up your hands and say holy is the lord holy is the lord even when you bring your gifts before him you will do it with trembling and you don't do it because you are happy you do it because it's your culture that's your realm that's your reality i may want to buy a house i've not bought it it will stop me from worshiping i may be trusting god for healing i've not had it it will stop me this is the culture of my world i come from another aeon but it will take light for you to know that word. can we lift our hands to now one minute and say lord help us to know you help us Help us. Help us to know you. Help us to know you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We give you praise. Lord, tonight you have brought us the emphasis of worship. And you have shown us that it's the heartbeat of the Father. That we must worship you in spirit and in truth. And by the teachings of your servant tonight... He has revealed to us that to worship you accurately, we must begin from sacrifice, the place of self-denial, where we don't acknowledge who we are, but we acknowledge who you are. And in that self-denial, we proceed into reverence, the fear of the Lord. And then we bring the sacrifices of praise unto your holy name. Tonight, even as we worship and give thanks, all we intend to do is to bring you praise and to acknowledge the eternal things that you have done for us not neglecting even the mundane things you have done because all of them sum up as blessings that has made our lives better and so we say take all the glory take all the praise take all the honor take all the majesty somebody give the lord a shout
Glory! To the Lamb upon the throne, we raise the sun. We raise the sun. For you, we got to know you. to God. Are you excited in your spirit? Give the Lord a big hand and take your seat. Glory to Jesus. There is a civilization we have been called into. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for Instagram. Thank God for Twitter. Thank God for TikTok. But that's not our kingdom. We use that to reach a dying world. You need to learn the ways of light. There's so much to access in that realm. One of it is powers. Powers. It's part of our heritage in the kingdom. Paul said, for this cause, I thank the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 from verse 17. He said, I pray for you rather, that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the things that are freely given to you by God. I wish we knew those things. You have the life of God. Nothing in you can die. If he wants to die, you stir yourself up in the Holy Ghost. It will come back to life. Glory to God. You have the faith of Jesus. Nothing can stop you. Anything that stands before you, you command it, it will go away. You have the anointing of Jesus Christ. Nothing can withstand you. Glory to God. You are too loaded. But you will need light to know. The day light comes, you will become a ruler. Because you will start accessing the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought towards us when he raised, raised Jesus from the dead. It is for this cause that God brought us into the kingdom so that we participate in this civilization. Thank God you have traveled around Africa. You have gone to Ghana. 
you have gone to Congo, you have gone to Mozambique. Some of you have even gone as far as Europe. Italy, Belgium, Holland, and some have traveled with even wider. That is good. You need an aeroplane to go there. But there are places where we go by sound. So, stop snapping pictures in business class and posting. Even the unbelievers do that. When next you come, tell us about the stories of heaven. Tell me that three days ago I was in the room and I was raptured. And I saw aeons, realms, yonder. Because we don't only travel horizontally, we also travel vertically. And you know the thing about vertical journeys? When you come back, you will come with tokens. Tokens. Tokens will follow you here. Tokens. Some of those tokens will be favor. Things will happen to you by the power of God. Even the ones you didn't ask for. Glory to God. This is what God wants us to do and live every day. When Philip went to Samaria, he finished his assignment. The Bible said he was caught up to the wilderness. He met the Ethiopian eunuch. He was caught off to Wasoto. The guy was traveling by where wind. Those are the civilizations of light. The witches have kept theirs. We can't lose ours. If witches have meetings today, nobody needs a car to go there. They will show up and it's not a miracle. If I appear on this altar, all of you will run. That means we are growing in earthly civilization, but we are being cut off from spiritual civilization. You know what's in the heart of the Father? For every one of us to participate in this kingdom. Exodus 19 from verse 4 to 6. He says, see how I deliver you, delivered you by mighty hand and carried you on eagle's wings unto myself to make you a kingdom of priests and king. So we are part of a kingdom. And we are not servants there. We are participators. Peter reiterated it in 1 Peter 2 now. He said, you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, God's own special. How come you are not participating in that kingdom? The time has come for us to also participate of our civilization. It's on this wise that we, we preach the way we preach. To stay hunger in your spirit. Stay hunger. And we don't only stay hunger in your spirit. We also go out there to win those who have not known about this civilization so that we can bring them john said in first john 1 from verse 1 he said that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life we have handled it he said that is what we commit to you he said so that you might have fellowship with us and he said truly our fellowship is with the father so we partake of these things and then we take it out like a buffet and invite the world to come and participate. Glory to God. This is